Hello, everybody! It is Tuesday! Who is joining us tonight? Who is with us tonight, this Tuesday night? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am super late Tuesday, right? Where am I? Oh my god, it's 20 after. Kitty is in first. You beat the Jennifer. Kitty beat Jennifer tonight. There is a first time for everything. Hey, Jennifer. Great to have you with us, Angela. Howdy, Kitty. Kelly, excuse me. Thought of you today, Kelly. I had a package going to Albuquerque today. Uh, Eric's here. Rick's here. Vicky. Hey, Karen. Jennifer. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. Marianne is with us. I did. In Massachusetts, you can get a haircut today. You can't open a retail store. You can't have appointments in your retail store. But you can get a haircut in Massachusetts. Oh, Carlos was glad to be back in business. Just don't take a left in Albuquerque. Ah, oh, one of those states you only go right in, Kelly, huh? Hey, Bonnie and Park, great to have you. Thanks, Vicky. Ah, oh, they do. They are regular. But I was so late tonight, I had a meeting before this, and I was so late that I had uh, Cassandra's glass tonight. So, is what I had. Anne is with us. Michelle is with us. Great to have you all with us tonight. So excited. So excited to have you all with us. Um, that is that is awesome. Great to have you here, even, even though I am incredibly tardy tonight. Uh, so what are we all grateful for this Tuesday? It's Tuesday. What are we grateful for on Tuesday night? What are we grateful for this day, Tuesday? Ashley is with us. Great to have you with us, Ashley. Good to have you all join us. Hey, Pat in the Peanut Gallery, I saw I owe you a reply. I haven't got, I haven't had any time on Facebook or an email today. It's been a crazy day. <laughs> Grateful that tomorrow is Wednesday. Hey, yeah, in Massachusetts, you can get a haircut, but you can't open a retail store. You can't have by appointment. Although we did have, uh... Awesome, Alexa. I am very glad to hear that. Alexa's got a good bank account today. Saturday hours in five. Saturday numbers in five hours. Cha Ching. Remember though, Angie, this can, this right now is going to be a roller coaster. Incredible highs and lows, but you should average out in the 65, 75 percent of normal. Thank you. Well, it's funny because I have an Ashley that works for me. So Ashley is one of my assistant managers uh, that uh, that works for me, and I actually saw her for the first time in probably a couple months uh, today. So, um, and I take it with all respect, though Ashley. So I uh, truly, uh, it's all good. AC is finally getting fixed today. I had to turn on the AC in the house tonight. Um, I, I I thought I wasn't going to make it through the month and. And the upstairs in our house uh, gets we get the afternoon sun and it and it just uh, it, it gets really hot. I got home and it was uh, 88 or something upstairs, so I'm like, okay, I'm forced to turn on. But we have four zone AC, so I can I don't have to turn on the whole house. I've only turned on one zone, uh, which is nice. They did do a nice job. Well, it it'll come, Alexa. Don't worry, it'll come. I, sales will come your way. I have the blessings of sales will get you there. Jana's joining us tonight, but I'm glad to hear what you're all grateful for. I've got a, I've got all sorts of stuff tonight. Busy night, but I'm going to try to fly through it. We'll hold a few things for tomorrow. Probably too, because I've got so much in my pile tonight. 
We start every day and night, every day and night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book. Absolutely highs and lows, but it's okay. You know, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. It's okay. Hey, Sadiqa's joining us tonight. Welcome. Welcome, Sadiqa. 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 I'm screwing that up, but you know I screw that up. Um, our good morning, good night book. Good morning. Face the day. If the day looms too large, kick it in the shin so it has to face you. That is our good morning today. Yeah, online sales. I mean, in Massachusetts, today was day one of uh, curbside pickup. Uh, we're allowed to do curbside pickup. We can't have anybody in the store. We had one customer who messaged in, they don't have a car, so how can they come to the curb? And so we have to deal with that. But hey, we'll, we'll, I'll gladly take their order and we'll figure it out. Thank you, Karen. And look at that, just another PayPal. Whoa, sorry about that. I was trying to flick PayPal was... I was getting a PayPal notification of an order coming in, so I was trying to flick that away. Thank you, Miss Karen. How is everything in found? Your new store, it's like you got a whole new store there. That is great. Let's see what we got here today. My pile is thick. Angie's with us. Great to have you, Angie. Let's see what we got here. Thank you, Carrie. That's great, Ashley. You know, I mean, you know, be be stubborn in your goals of being the best store, and flexible in your methods and how you get there and how you how you get the money in the re register. Contactless consignment yesterday. That's nice. We're we're gonna have to figure out some of that uh, moving forward, depending on what the governor in Massachusetts lets us do. Hey, Marsha, great to have you here from Ricochet. Hey, Julie, how are you? Great to have you with us. But in response to the current crisis, I liked this quote. The most important question business leaders, and you, you are a leader, have to answer is, will we choose to build bunkers or windmills? Think about that. Will you build bunkers or windmills? for your business. Yes, uh, Carrie, yes you can use owner distribution and your salary uh, towards PPP as long as it does not exceed, um, the payment to you does not exceed 15 grand over the eight weeks. Um, that is the key to that. That is, that is the big key. The U.S. economy is showing signs of life. After a severe downturn, early signs suggest the U.S. economy is slowly beginning to recover. Or at least it's not getting worse, the Wall Street Journal reports. Truckloads are growing, mortgage and new business applications are up, and bookings for flights and hotels are a touch, touch higher. The outlook, however, is far from clear. Unemployment has still soared while business activity has plummeted, and the latest improvements are tied to potentially temporary factors, including emergency spending from Congress uh, and the gradual reopening of states. J.C. Penney is a hot, you know, is like the hot prom date right now. Okay, everybody a few weeks ago, you know. Old J.C. Penney should just close and go away, and and the uh, dark days of of the mall. But um, there's a lot of people that think J.C. Penney is um, going to uh, survive and thrive in a uh, scaled down format. Preet, uh, the real estate conglomerate, P R E I T. Um, uh, who several years ago began buying back department store space in the company's mall and filling them with more viable retail concepts, uh, thinks we have not seen the last of JCPenney. Uh, 
people, we were encouraged to see how they work through their Sephora issues and believe there's a place for a scaled down penny so we can look forward to working with them. Uh, he said during a earnings call. Okay, and uh, Preet gets over $5.1 million in rent from the pennies that they have in their centers. So they have a lot of good reason to keep them uh, viable, but uh, in a scaled-down format. That's okay. Um, but this one is even better. This one, you know, if... if, if if uh, a mall owner thinking that pennies has a way to survive, three tech-related reasons Amazon should buy J.C. Penny. Okay, who would think that Amazon's acquisition of J.C. Penny makes sense from a technology standpoint? Um, the customer comes to you. Amazon has launched a variety of programs and partnerships that aimed at enabling customers to pick up their online orders at physical locations. This reduces the substantial last mile cost of product delivery and provides customers more flexibility in how they fulfill their purchases. Amazon would absorb a national brick and mortar fleet that already has a sophisticated omni-channel pickup architecture in place. JCPenney recently expanded a curbside pickup option known as Style on the Go. Reserve spot, parking spots and text to the number and their order comes right out. The product comes to the customer faster if uh, JCPenney became a partner of the Ener Amazon Enterprise. Uh, with a fully realized foundation for delivering online orders from local stores, Penny's has made significant investments in state-of-the-art systems that support an enterprise-wide fulfillment strategy to minimize markdowns and improve customer service. Many stores are capable of filling JCP orders with store inventory and shipping directly to customers with standard home delivery turnaround of two business days uh, or less to over 95% of the U.S. population from where there's a pennies. Um, by integrating this existing capability with uh, fast prime delivery, Amazon could shave even more time off order fulfillment while also reducing cost. And in-store innovation. Amazon is an acknowledged leader in retail innovation. JCPenney is usually seen as an old-fashioned industry veteran, but JCPenney actually has some sophisticated in-house developed store solutions that would give Amazon a leg up in its efforts to competitively differentiate itself in the department store vertical. For example, JCPenney introduced last year a new store fam format including the styling rooms, fitting rooms equipped with technology that allows shoppers to get new sizes or colors without leaving the fitting room. The rooms are staffed with style experts who will help customers pull together outfits. Uh, and in the home goods area, Penny's partnered with Pinterest on a digital tool that helps customers who are looking for a home refresh find inspiration. Uh, after answering a few home decor preference questions, shoppers are prevent, presented with a curated Pinterest, bo Pinterest board featuring penny home products that best meet their needs and match their lifestyle. That sounds right up Amazon's alley. So that is kind of interesting. And I would have never thought technology that pennies actually has uh, would influence the reason why Amazon should buy them. Bed Bath & Beyond is going to reopen 600 stores by June 13th, expanding contactless curbside pickup. So, um, including 500 Bed Bath & Beyond locations across uh, North America, 50 Christmas tree shop uh, stores, which were founded here in Massachusetts on Cape Cod, Cost Plus World Market stores, and, uh, and the stores will follow the company safety plan. I like this quote today. I got lots of quotes for you today. Between saying and doing, many a pair of shoes is worn out. Uh, boom. I found this interesting today. You know, you talk about job cuts and, and certainly uh, retail as, as, and restaurants have been the banner of, of uh, layoffs and such. But uh, it was interesting when I got a notice from National Grid today that, oh, they're going to be doing estimated meter readings, okay, National Grid's the electric company in our area, and gas company, and they'll be doing estimated meter readings 
um, because of reduced staff and to keep their staff safe, okay? Well, they just drive around to get our meter um, in all but one of my buildings. One of my buildings has a meter inside, the oldest of my buildings has a meter inside the building. Um, but uh, it's, I found it kind of interesting that uh, that is their new way and we could submit adjustments or once they resume full staff they will uh, go back to uh, to doing normal meter readings and adjust accordingly but uh, or we could submit our meter readings on our own they'll teach us to read our meter isn't that nice of them lululemon lululemon um, is uh, opening hundreds of its stores and here's how it's keeping shoppers safe uh as of today more than 150 lululemon stores have opened back up in north america uh europe asia new zealand and australia with uh roughly 200 locations set to open over the next two weeks um they're taking a balanced and thoughtful approach uh to prioritize safety and well-being of our people, guests, and communities. To help ensure the well-being of both employees and customers, the company said it put in place new safety precautions in stores which will operate with modified hours. Associates are required to wear face masks while cleaning and sanitizing practices have been enhanced. The numbers of shoppers allowed in the store at once will be limited and store layouts have been updated to adhere to social distancing guidelining. What's more, and the more interesting part of all that, is that Lululemon is closing every second fitting room, adopting a cashless payment system in states that allow it, and offering buy online, pick up and store services. But every second fitting room, so another um, is how Lululemon is doing it. Do, 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 do. Okay, this next bit of information is not to piss you off. But I can already see the angry faces on it. Um, it's earnings season on Wall Street. Okay, it's earning time and earnings calls are happening. Walmart's Lowe's and Wendy's are among the companies that sa said they saw a bounce in spending America in, in, in April as Americans received stimulus checks. The U.S. government issued millions of checks with range up to $1,200 per eligible adult. But retailers were hesitant to forecast their sales in the future as it's unclear if customers will keep shopping after those dollars run out. Um, Americans lined up to buy goods at supermarkets like Costco, Wholesale, and Walmart as fears of the pandemic came on. Uh, um, uh, during Walmart's earnings call, Doug McMillan, the CEO, said the big box retailer has seen different phases of shopping during the pandemic. First, he said, customers stockpiled food and household essentials. Later, they sought out items that helped them work, learn, and entertain themselves during long days at home. And then, the final weeks of April came. Another trend emerged. Customers were buying big TVs, sporting goods, toys, with monies they got from the stimulus checks the U.S. government sent out. Um... Uh, they, the checks appear to have had their desired effect. In particular, they helped drive purchases of non-essential items that people had been skipping during the early days of the pandemic. Uh, for instance, Apple CEO Tim Cook said on the company's earnings call that it also saw an uptick really across the board in the second half of April and gave credit to the newly deposited stimulus money. Target CEO Brian Cornell saw a noticeable bump in discretionary spending fueled by extra money in customers' pockets. Cornell said there was a resurgence in sales of clothing, cosmetics, and discretionary items. Best Buy CEO said on his earnings call Thursday that the company saw strong sales growth at the end of April. Like many other retailers, we saw sales benefit during the last three weeks of the quarter as customers undoubtedly chose to spend some of their government stimulus money on the products and services we provide. There were bumps in computers, gaming, and small appliances. Lowe's CEO saw the retailers saw indicators that checks boosted the sale of home improvement items. We definitely saw an uptick in sales, an uptick in ticket transactions, and our business definitely responded to it. Uh, 
Home Depot said the stimulus funds contributed to already swelling sales of paint and DIY supplies. Fast food restaurants, which rely on discretionary income, also saw an effect. Hey, Joanne, Chris, great for joining us. Chipotle CEO Brian Nichols said on the company's earnings call that sales at its restaurants had improved after hitting a low point in the week that ended March 29th. He attributed the sales increase to many factors, including tax refunds, consumer fatigue with cooking and stimulus checks. People were like, you know what? I've got the additional cash. I worked through my pantry loading, and I think it's time to break the routine of me cooking a little. Stir crazy, and let's reach out for restaurants to solve the problem. Wendy's CEO told analysts on the company's earnings call that stimulus checks lifted business. In the latter half of April, U.S. same-store sales were still down, but they declined less. It's hard to really quantify how big an impact, but any time disposable income uh, improves a bit, you see an impact on their business. Um... Uh, but even as companies who are thankful for the bump, they were hesitant to forecast future sales and spending patterns. But I, I, you know, just that that whole thing is is, um, it, it's, it's, it is what it is. And it's important for us to be aware of it. And uh, I know it hurts in areas especially that are still closed. But you know what? Creativity is contagious. Pass it on. Hang on a second here. The Fed's Main Street Loan Program, which is really not a Main Street Loan Program, is set to kick off within the next two weeks. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston is managing the program, um, and uh, he expects companies to begin receiving money through the central bank's Main Street Lending Program within two weeks. This is loans, um, individual loans that will go out um, that are um, more than a million dollars, I think, is the is the lowest loan. They're, they're uh, a few year terms. They're not like the idle and they're really to keep um, big companies going. One of the rumors, I haven't gotten full confirmation on it, is that TJ Maxx is getting $188 million under this or so. I'll probably have more on that tomorrow. For the economy, the worst of the corona shutdowns may be over. I covered that in a different one. Hang on. I'm, I get so much information. What do we got going on here? Gucci. Gucci. You guys know Gucci. Or some of you do. Plans a new path with catwalks. I did, Dana. And I still owe you a call, but don't worry. I will get to you. Uh, Gucci's creative director, Alessandro Michel, has outlined plans to shift from the worn-out cruise, pre-fall, spring-summer, autumn-winter roster towards twice-yearly, seasonless meetings in a series of Instagram crows. It's the second luxury brand after St. Laurent, owned by conglomerate Keering, to hint at wider changes to how they market and sell fashion. The industry is facing a reckon reckoning as sales plummet and consumers rethink their priorities in a post-COVID-19 world. Burberry reported a sharp reduction in profit by 57% earlier this week as closed stores halted sales and they were forced to write down the value of in-season stock, likely to be sold at a discount. This crisis represents a fundamental test for us all. Michelle wrote, after all, we understand we went too far. Our reckless actions have burned the house we live in. We conceived ourselves as separate from nature. We usurped nature. We dominated and wounded it. Um, the Council of Fashion Designers of America and the British Fashion Council have publicly called for a slower pace and called out excessive production and deliveries. Instead, they suggest producing less product that is more creative and higher quality. They also called for a shift in cadence so deliveries align more closely to when consumers need them. 
kind of like what resale offers. Hey, Ellen, great to have you with us. Currently in the Northern Hemisphere, spring summer clothes are already on sale despite the season barely starting. The move by Gucci, often a leader in the sector, could signal a knock-on effect by others. Knock on, not knock off. The industry widely followed suit once Gucci announced it planned to ban fur in 2017. So let's see what Gucci does with their industry-leading role. It's okay, Ellen. No worries. I know you're always with us. Um... Canceled orders, delayed payments, continuing on that concept. Canceled order, delayed payments, how supplier collaboration could reverse apparel's nosedive. When demand drops at the consumer level, the, the low delta of the supply chain gains force the closer it gets to the source. It's a phenomenon called the bullwhip effect. And with an 89% drop in U.S. apparel sales in April, year over year, the industry is in the midst of a bullwhip for the ages. Global clothing supply chains have unraveled in just a few short weeks as the trust and goodwill between many buyers and manufacturers um, has, is being tested. Uh, how apparel retailers and brands react to falling demand will directly affect the amount and variety of manufacturing capacity available in major apparel producing countries when demand returns and therefore the future of fashion sourcing. Dun dun dun! And cancellations primed the bullwhip effect. In the early weeks of the pandemic, when non-essential retail was quite suddenly shut, apparel companies were faced with tough decisions. Honor orders in production and postpone upcoming orders, or refuse incoming merchandise and cancel future orders. There's a spectrum of purchasing behavior between these two extremes, and where purchasing organizations land may impact the industry for years. North American purchasers canceled more orders than their European counterparts. 11% of North American companies canceled more than half their orders compared to 2% of European companies. And this is just, um, thank you, Amy. Um, this is just um, really, um, you know, creating a very tense environment you know all this comes down to you know like i say with everything is relationships who you know who you like trust and, and you know companies are breaking this you know yes it's a global pandemic but you know pick up the phone talk figure out ways to path uh to move forward and um for a lot of companies this is really going to burn their uh, bridges uh with their suppliers so that's gonna hurt um, the way things are done. While other retailers have pledged, made public pledges to accept and paid for existing orders and work with vendors to reschedule others, H&M, Nike, Target, VF Corp, and PVH have made such commit commitments, where others are just flat out canceling, pushing out other orders, and, um, um, and in many low-cost fashion uh, manufacturing hubs such as Bangladesh, India, Cambodia, Honduras, and Ethiopia, extended periods of unemployment will mean hunger and disease, um, you know, as part of this. So th there's a whole ripple effect throughout this, and um, it, it, it is, you know, how you handle these relationships when you're in tough times is huge. And, and some companies have done a better job at it than others. Um, and it's just stark to see the difference between uh, the retailers in the U.S. and the retailers in Europe and how they handled it. I have sad news to report. An alligator that lived through World War II has passed. Saturn, the Mississippi alligator, was born in the U.S. during the Great Depression. He lived at the Berlin Zoo until the bombing in 1943 provided an escape. He was discovered by the British in 1946 and lived most of his next 60-plus years in Moscow before dying last week. In news you can't make up, Saturn, though, the alligator's name is Saturn, is expected to live on as a stuffed exhibit in Moscow because I can't make up the news and what's happening in the world. And you need some of this. You need some of this news. 
<sighs> you do, you do. Um, even if sometimes you don't want it, you need it. Um, let's see, what else we got here tonight? Seven things to consider offering your employees before your state forces you to. So coming out of this pandemic, okay, which we are going to come out of it, we all are coming out of this, okay, a lot of states, so the CARES Act offered some emergency sick leave um, and family care benefits and such, and there's a lot of states that are trying to use this pandemic, okay, in the state legislature to push through things at, such as paid family leave, um, sick time, vacation. So, so one of the things that um, this HR article is talking about is seven things you could consider offering before your state tells you to. A higher wage, okay? Minimum wage is only going up in states, okay? And it's, after this pandemic, it's only gonna go up uh, even more. We're set to go to 15 in Massachusetts already. Um, but, uh, you know, a better wage. And I know it's hard to think about some of these things now, but being ahead of them is better than being steamrolled by them. So uh, I know some states tried to force an emergency minimum wage raise <coughs> as part of uh, their coronavirus reopening plans. And uh, that has been met, uh, not favorably, but it ha has been out there in some states. Paid sick leave, currently something we're required to offer in Massachusetts, paid sick leave. Everyone gets uh, paid sick leave in Massachusetts, even your part-time high school kid can earn up to 40 hours a year uh, of paid sick leave. Um, da -da -da, what else? Paid family leave. Um, that uh, uh, Massachusetts has an insurance program for, so that is law, takes effect next year people can get it um and uh that is a state law so that is coming in massachusetts but it's paid for partially uh by the employee and partially much like uh unemployment um uh, much like a a payroll tax any other payroll tax that's split between the employer paid uh time off is another one paid jury duty leave Doo -doo 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 -doo. Voting leave and time off for any reason are, are seven things that are suggested you um, figure out a way to um, offer your employees. I would say those things are important to at least be aware of in, in the mix of things and in the mix of costs that you have for your business. Okay, so with your business and the way states are working right now um, and as unemployment extends uh, for people because it's not ex while the third quarter is expected to be the greatest expansion in US history okay that the economy will grow at a faster rate okay it, that is true it's still I, I think that is going to be true with the reopening of the country in contrast to the closing of the country which was also the worst quarter in American history okay I think, um, so it's all relative, but there's going to be a push on this because it's not expected to, re uh, to get back to pre-employment uh, levels, pre-recession uh, employment levels. So these are things to keep in mind, okay? And um, uh, y y from a budgeting standpoint. So you need, even if you're not offering these things, even if you're not offering... Yeah, they do appreciate it, Eric. You're, you are correct. Um, and, you know, I'll add one we, we just added during the pandemic. Uh, I mean, it was on our list of things to do anyways, is a retirement plan. Um, and uh, especially with a, a long-time workforce and everything, we're, we're really excited to be able to offer that and get that set up. So, um, you know, taking into account, especially the wage costs and some of these paid leaves, Figuring that out uh, and budgeting for it as you move forward is really important. So uh, just something to keep in mind on that. Um, the uh, What else I got here tonight? The PPP has approved over 4.4 million PPP loans 
and over uh, $500 billion uh, to date. Average loan size across the whole PPP has been around 115000 but it's actually in this round that's currently going on, it is much lower than that. So again, if you haven't gotten your PPP, now is a good time to apply for it. The banks don't have a line. Uh, you can move right to the front and get it done. Melissa's joining us tonight. How are you, Melissa? Great to have you join us tonight. Do, 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 do. What have I got going on here? Had something else here. Oh yeah, the the um, Nancy Sheeler joining us too. Hey Nancy, you're alive. Well, that's a good start. It's Tuesday, Melissa. I'll tell you that. It's Tuesday. So in other news, as Congress works towards another bill, they're off this week. We wouldn't want them to work too hard. Um, so I don't expect anything uh, too substantive this week. Next week, I do expect more info on, um, I expect hopefully uh, Treasury to get their button gear on some changes uh, with the PPP. And I'll have more information. I may even have some more information on that this week if uh, Mnuchin gets uh, his butt in gear. Uh, but um, Congress itself, the next bill coming out of them is scheduled, uh, you know, is still several weeks away at this point um, when they didn't get anything done by Memorial Day. But I am expecting some more PPP information uh, this week. Again, as we're heading those first loans uh, move towards um, the, the eligibility to apply for forgiveness. Again, just because you can doesn't mean you have to apply for forgiveness on the first day. Um, although I, um, in general, want to be ready for it earlier uh, rather than later. But um, there's a lot of ambiguity still and still a lot of opportunity for other things to happen. So, And I expect that to happen. But if when, I, when it does happen, I'm going to cover it. And you know what? I'm going to cover it here live. Live at 8 o'clock every night. At 8 o'clock every night or... On nights like tonight, 8-ish, every night I am live in the Narts Facebook group. All these videos, all the information I talk about, get copied over. They are on the, the page narts.org slash resale strong. Narts.org slash resale strong is a public page where all the information I talk about, including this video, are posted by the next day at noon. They end out over there. And, this, and have a link to the YouTube channel where the videos are stored, which is you're not alone running this store. Share that information with everybody you know in business. Let's help get everybody in your community, everybody that's in your network, to the other side of this. It's so important. We're so excited to get everybody um, to the other side and even get Kelly to finish the treadmill. Okay? Um, but I will be back here again tomorrow night, live at 8 o'clock. You have a question about you, about your world, about your specific situation, you know how to reach me. The best way to reach me is to email me. You email me at neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com. That'll get you right to it and uh, bring you right to the other side, get your information to me, and I will call you back. I know I'm several days a week. I think I have a couple that are I'm a week behind on, but I will get caught up to everybody this week. Um, at some point this week, I, I promise you, I will call you. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't roll around in bed uh, staying up all night. It, we'll make it all right one way or the other. We start this program. Start this program every night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start this program every night. And, oops, hang on a second. I got one more quote for you tonight. One more quote for you tonight. From my new book. Look at this new book somebody that Vina sent me. Vina sent me this book. I got it today. All right, I got a new quote for you. The greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it's too low and we reach it. Think about that one for a little bit. Our good morning today and our good morning, good night book is good morning. Face the day. If, it day. if the day looms too large, kick it in the shin so it has to face you. 
Our good night tonight is good night. Way to face the day. Now climb into bed with the night and draw the shades. Hey, everybody, I am Neil Abramson. I'll be back here again live, live at 8 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night. If you need me in the meantime, you just email me, neil at neil at ecistores.com, neil at ecistores.com, because you and you, but most especially you, are not alone running this store. Have a great night, everybody. It's dinner time. I'll see you tomorrow.